Well, I made a quick stop in New Jersey in the 911 to uh, do a quick house call. Uh, it's a little rainy out today, but uh, I was talking to one of my customers and um, he said it's time for an oil change. So uh, here we are, 365 GT2 plus two. I've known this car through three owners. Um, I probably have done uh, videos on it before. I know I've done videos on this before, but um, I tend to do work on this car uh, in New Jersey every other year. Uh, the owner, you know, doesn't really need much on this car, and especially on these Colombo engines, they don't really need a lot. I mean, they, um, they don't need belt services. They really just only need oil changes. And when you get the carburetors set up, there's really not much to them. So this car is just a, just a good, solid car. Um, so this is one of those years that it's, uh, it's an oil change year and, and there's no reason to ship it all the way up to me or drive it. And although Aaron one day will come up and drive to my shop, but, uh, for a visit as an excuse to come up and drive the car. But, um, this year was one of these things where we talked about it and I said, Hey, listen, I'm driving by, I could stay overnight. It's almost, it is cheaper for me to stay, um, close by drive up, stay down here, and then do the oil change, and then head home, then for me to drive, or for him to put it in a truck and uh, ship it all the way up here. So uh, that's what I'm, I'm gonna do right now. I think on the list this year, it's just to do the oil change. So I brought the oil, you know, a couple bags of oil, or a couple couple containers of oil. I got my uh, tool kit, you know, I think a copper gasket for the oil pan, my uh, oil wrench, so, uh, you know, I pre-ordered everything, brought all this stuff up. I got my my oil filters in here, ready to go. And um, the other thing I brought is some uh, contact cement because he said that the, the pedal is a little, uh, is falling off the brake pedal. So it just needs to be re-glued. So here we go, I'm gonna get to work. I don't know if you can hear me over this um, fan, but uh, started to drain the oil down below. And um, the only problem is we started this engine already this morning just to get it up on the lift. So when I pull these filters off, they're, they're going to be filled with oil. So what's good. So I'm trying to wrap as many paper towels as I can around the bottom of this filter. So when I pull it off, it doesn't, um, it doesn't just drip oil all over the floor, but that's, you know, that's the problem with starting the, starting the engine a little bit. The oil filters fill up and uh, the, if the check valves are working, which they usually do, they're filled with oil. So the second you unscrew it, it's gonna make a big old mess, but uh, you know, I should be able to get this off hopefully without too much of a mess. All right, well, I got them off. It wasn't too bad. Uh, you can see how this one's just kind of overflowing a little bit. I'm gonna sop that up a little bit with these paper towels. The other one wasn't bad at either. You just gotta unscrew them really fast and then get them out. But uh, all right, that step is done. Next step, clean all this out, get the new filters put in. All right, so I got the brand new filters ready to go back in. Um, I like Baldwin filters. Um, this is the B253. This is the one that goes on 330s and, and, uh, and 365s and all the Daytonas and all that other stuff. Um, you know, the cases on these things, you can feel that they use a thicker steel. And um, I think that they higher, have a higher burst pressure. Um, in America, they're kind of felt like they're truck filters, but you know, Ferrari back in the day must have had some deal with Baldwin to make these to their specs, and and um, I forget what it was, some kind of endorsement. But at the same time, you know, they they they're better than the Frams. Not a big fan of Frams. I think when you look at them side by side, the um, the those orange filters, the cases are not very strong, and I've seen them bulge out when somebody is overpressured the uh, oiling system you know somebody might have set the oil pressure regulator too high which is um which is right there and um it's a cheat what guys do is when a car has low oil pressure they'll dial that oil pressure uh, regulator wide open so that it looks like it has decent oil pressure but what happens is when when the engine's cold and you go to start it up for the first time you know because you got that oil pressure regulator wide open it sends it all to this filter that's sitting right there and i've seen filters burst and, and literally like expand like a balloon 
and break or burst and spray oil all over the place because if you start the engine cold and then you go to rev it and the oil pressure there's no regulation regulator you know regulating any of the oil pressure it can either uh get past the gasket or it will um it will just expand and burst so and also like i said having a stronger steel case makes it a little bit less um susceptible now if somebody has oil pressure pre set wrong i've actually seen these also blow up i mean obviously fluid stronger than than an empty can of uh, steel so it will change so it's not a, an end all but at the same time might as well start with a better case so that's why i'm a fan of the baldwins um ufis i think are the other one that everybody uses they're italian i'm assuming and and i see them on a lot which is not a problem the white ones but and ironically everybody sees these frams on the cars and they think that that was what everybody wants to use but what's happening is guys take the baldwins paint them orange and then put the fram stickers on them so don't be mistaken you go to a car show and you see frams on on an old ferrari they're painted baldwins most of them so there you go all right both filters are uh installed i uh got them as hand tight as possible and i cranked down on them with my hand oh look at that the heat stopped blowing um so i got these to the point where even with a bare hand and all the grip it's not going to turn tight and that's how tight i like it it's not like i actually torque them down but um some guys get them way too tight it doesn't need that much but it um uh, it's tight enough it shouldn't um you know as everybody says the joke is what's tight tight tighter and then there's good and tight um, well filters are kind of like one of those things where you just have to have a good but if you can turn it by hand and um, get it as tight as you possibly can by hand even if you clean it all off and get all the oil off of it it uh, it's the way to go and then as I'm here as I'm here I'm just doing a quick peek see if anything is out of place um, last year um, the car was at my shop and we did a major major like we, we pulled the valve covers off air cleaners off you know with the pump all the stuff off just so that we could do the valve adjustment so it looks like the wrinkle paint is holding up pretty nicely um there's a couple i'm just making sure there's no some egregious leaks i mean i think it's sealed fairly well um but uh, i see one little bit of wetness right here in the corner so i might try to get in there and see if i could just tighten down or snug down a valve cover gasket or something or or a acorn nut or something but uh, other than that, I think the car looks pretty good. I mean, some people will change uh, coolant every year too. Um, Aaron drives this car, so it's not like it's sitting still and coolant is supposed to last like five years or three or five years. And um, you know, the interval is sometimes we change it every year, but I've been starting to change it every other year, especially for a driver or somebody who uses it often. So there's always circulation. If a car's sitting for long periods of time, yeah, that's, that's not good, but um, I felt pretty confident about doing this car um, every other year. So the next time it comes up to me, to my shop, I'll probably do it. But um, I think uh, this looks pretty good. The oil's draining down below. I'm going to put the car back up in the air and then uh, put, the, uh, put the plug back in and put it back down and fill it up. So uh, on to the next step. All right, I got 10 quarts in the car. And um, usually about 11, maybe 12 quarts, depending. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fire it up real quick. Make sure I'm in neutral. Make sure the M switch is down on this stuff. This is the uh, funny thing on 365s. They have this kill switch. A button is on, which is the um, the um, fuel pump. Turn that on. We can hear it going. This should start right up. This is not... Uh... There you go. All right, so I'm watching oil pressure. building so that's pretty good right in the middle I mean it's cold so it's gonna be a little less reactive simply because the oil is so cold so you know for a cold car it sure idles down pretty well with no choke uh, so now that I've gotten the oil to run you can see oil pressure bleeding back off um, what I'm gonna do is check the level um, at 10 quarts it's probably a quart low but I just wanted to circulate it um, and then um, I'm going to check the level and get it spot on. So uh, last few steps of getting this oil change done. All right, so the oil change is done. And the last thing I have to take care of, I apologize about the lighting, but uh, I don't have my usual lighting setup. 
but um, it looks like the uh, pedal, the rubber pedal came off there. So here's here it is, and um, it just slips off if you don't glue it in. And um, what you got to do is it, it's got to be put on with with uh, contact cement. This one feels a little almost plasticky, so I might have to roughen up the uh, the edges a little bit. But what I use is this uh, this uh, Wellwood contact cement. Put it on both sides, let it dry, and then put it on there. It should stick on. So uh, that's the that's one last thing I got to do just to get this uh, get this car back or get it all done. I got glue all over the the pedal there. Coated it all over that pedal. So um, all we gotta do is just sit and wait for it to dry. And then I have to carefully kind of stretch it on to the edges. Um, Cause the second it, this glue touches the two dried pieces, it will try to stick. So you kind of have to get one shot at putting it in. But um, yeah, it should be a lot better. Should not come off at this point. Um, I'll take a look at the, the clutch pedal, but I think that's pretty well stuck. Uh, and, and the brake pedal will feel the same. I got the pre brake pedal back in. Um, it feels pretty good, glued in place. And, um, you know, just a little side thing, if you notice, if you look down there, um, on 365s, a lot of these later Ferraris, 330s and uh, 365s, for some reason they left the um, the gas pedal bare. So like the three, let's see, what would have been? Would have been the 250s would have had the, uh, the rubber pad over the, um, the accelerator pedal. But for the 330s, they went and 365s they went with this uh this accelerator level that's left bare steel so if you ever see somebody putting a, a rubber uh a cover over it and uh modified an earlier one to put it on there it's wrong it's actually supposed to be bare steel but um this one you know we're not trying to win any shows on this one but it has the right pedal covers it's a little worn but i think kind of like the patina it fits well with this car so uh that's done and i think i'm done for today's job on this car so um yeah, we'll see this car next year. Uh, it's ready to go for another season of driving. And unfortunately, today it's kind of wet out, so we won't get a chance to really take it out. I've run it, just made sure the oil pressure was up, looked pretty good, and um, you know I'll get a report back from Aaron what he thinks. But uh, yeah, this is a great car. Uh, you know, just so you see, 53,212 miles on it. So um, you know, uh, that's uh, he, I'm hoping to see him put some more miles on it from now until next year. Anyway, thanks for watching.